Hello everyone, my name is Ji Xin Tang from the University of Chicago. I'm happy to demonstrate CrocodileDB that exploits time selectness to achieve resource efficient query execution. There are two major approaches for processing a data set under changes. Continuous query eagerly incorporates new data as it arrives to provide low latency but has high resource consumption. Batch processing on the other hand defers execution to the time or when all data arrives to save resources but suffers high latency. CrocodileDB explores the middle ground between the two. It targets applications where users allow a snackness of query latency to reduce resource consumption. This timing information enables several new system strategies. In this demonstration, I will talk about the strategy of intelligent lazy evaluation. Consider the example of querying the tuples under loading. To achieve a low latency, the system will start the query early and incrementally process new tuples. We define the latency and the time between all data arrives and the result is returned. If users allow higher snackness, the system can execute more lazily, which means that we will start every execution with a larger number of tuples. While lazy execution results in higher latency, it can reduce CPU consumption compared to eager execution. Here is an example that shows why eager query execution can have higher CPU consumption. This query is to find the customers whose balance is larger than the average balance across all customers. When a new tuple is inserted and the average balance is updated, the query needs to rescan the customer table to find the new set of customers that meet the new join condition. If we eagerly execute the query like for every new tuple, we have to repeatedly rescan the customer table and remove old results, which greatly increases the CPU consumption. Our prior work, Incrementability Aware Query Processing shows that eagerly maintain this average balance does not increase the CPU consumption. It is the parent join that introduces the wasted work and should be maintained lazily. So we decompose the whole query into smaller pieces called query paths and execute them at different frequencies, which is named pace. The higher the paces, the more eagerly you execute the query path. For example, pace three means to start one execution for every one third of estimated total input tuples. So InQP finds the pace configuration that minimizes the total work and meets the final work constraint, where the total work is proxy for the CPU consumption and the final work constraint is a proxy for the allowed time slackness. The final work constraint is a lob to trade off between CPU consumption and query latency and connects batch processing and continuous query. The lower the constraint is, the more eagerly you execute the query. In CrocodileDB, users specify a SQL statement, what data to query, and the final work constraint. The constraint is defined and the ratio between uh, between the desired final work users want to achieve and the one of batch processing. For example, constraint 23 means that users want to reduce the final work to 30% of the one of batch processing. We implement InQP on Spark and compare it with Spark that uses a single pace for the whole query. We extend Spark to support delete and updates and use our cost, uh, cost model to find the single pace to make it meet the final work constraint. We use 10 gigabyte GPCH data and simulate a data arrival rate of 1 gigabyte per minute. Due to the limited time, we run the experiments offline and replay the results at faster speed in our demonstration. Let's look at the demonstration system. In the configuration panel, users can specify a query for window size and final work constraint. Let's use Q17 as an example. When we choose Q17, our system shows the trade-off between the final work constraint and the percentage of additional work compared to batch processing. For example, the constraint 0.05 means we want to reduce the final work to 5% of batch processing, but needs to increase the total work by 35%. We can see that Spark has higher additional work because it uses a single pace for the whole query. Let's assume that users want to use a final work constraint 0.05. After we set this configuration, we can see the pace configuration optimized by the system for InQP. 
For query paths that likely increase total work more, we lazily execute them, and thus they have a smaller pace, like query paths three and five. Otherwise, we execute them eagerly. We can see that Spark uses a single pace for the whole query. After we click the sub query button, we can see how the query is executed at runtime. The query path statistics shows how many insert and delete rows or output for each operator. The higher the number is, the more CPU consumption the query has. If a query path is executed and the row statistics is changed, we mark it as red. Otherwise, we mark it as black. We can see that compared to Spark that executes the whole query using a single pace, NQP can selectively delay the execution of some queries, some query paths, and have a lower number of rows output from each operator. At the top, we also show the aggregated average CPU usage per minute. We can see that NQP has a lower CPU usage compared to Spark. When the query is finished, we will report the query latency and at the CPU time, which represents how many seconds the query execution occupies, in, uh, occupies our task machine's CPUs. We see that they have a similar latency, but NQP has much lower CPU consumption. To conclude, we demonstrate Crocodile DB that targets applications in the middle ground between batch processing and continuous query processing. It exploits the time slackness information to reduce the total query work and also achieve similar latency compared to existing approaches. Thank you for listening. I'd like to take any questions.